Hi everyone, welcome to the Milo Lab Rosetta Workshop, uh, virtual this time. Um, hope you all are doing well. Um, my name is Shannon Smith, I'm a graduate student in the Milo Lab, um, and today I'm gonna be giving a short talk on a couple basic concepts in Rosetta, um, talking about input-output, and also navigating um, this big software package. Um, this talk is gonna be broken up into two different parts. So the first one being the input output section. So this is basically, how do I run basic Rosetta applications? We're gonna be doing an example of a very simple one just to get you guys acquainted with how you run things in Rosetta. Um, and then the second part of this is going to be navigating around. So Rosetta is a large software package um, and I just wanted to give a basic overview of where you can go and find things on your own. Um, questions are encouraged, so post in the Discord um, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. I just want to give a personal note on this real quick. Um, I was actually, before joining, uh, before coming to graduate school and joining the Milo Lab, um, I did the Milo Lab workshop. Um, so I sat in your seats. Um, and then when I came on board, they asked what was missing. And so um, I said, I came up with this talk. Um, because I felt that um, as a student, this would have been helpful. So I've been where you guys are right now. Um, and I hope that this helps you all. So this talk is located in the short talks directory um, and it's called Navigating Rosetta IO PowerPoint. There's also a PDF version uh, under the same name. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm dealing with a cold. Um, and then there's actually gonna be a couple example files and those are gonna be located um, in the Rosetta IO directory. Um, and we're just gonna run a couple simple commands um, to get you guys feeling more comfortable with how these things work. So I have in red here, notice these files are located outside of Rosetta. You do not wanna store any files of your own um, within the Rosetta directories. Um, so what this means is you're gonna have these things stored in a different location on your local drive. Um, not within the actual Rosetta um, software. That's, you're gonna point to all of those things. You're not gonna keep your data files in there. Um, we are gonna be going through a couple of different files um, and it would be helpful if you guys wanna use your favorite text editor, so whether that's gedit via Emacs, um, to look through those uh, as we go along. So how do I get Rosetta? Um, you guys have already uh, done this, hopefully, um, for this workshop, and, uh, but I just wanted to give a quick overview. You can download it from uh, rosettacommons.org. Um, I'm going to be pointing to this website a lot. It's actually very helpful for, for a lot of different things. Um, but I just wanted to briefly touch on the, um, the release types that we have, so weekly releases. Um, for example, this 2020.07, uh, so this is the latest version of the code. Um, these get released um, roughly every week, and importantly, these have to pass different types of tests um, before they get released to the general public. And then we have these um, uh, less frequent releases, so we're going to be using Rosetta version 3.12 throughout this workshop. Um, again, these have passed all scientific tests um, and also usability tests as well. Um, links to documentation, forum, and demos. So these are incredibly helpful um, when you're just getting started. There's a lot of great information on rosettacommons.org for this. So the general workflow will look something like this. You have your input files, and this can consist of um, a structure or a starting sequence, um, and you, you give it some options. Some of these are application specific, um, and then you're going to actually run it through an application. Uh, so a couple examples of this, uh, two very commonly used ones are Scourge 82, which simply scores a given protein structure, and Rosetta Scripts, which is, um, you all will hear much more about that over the course of the next couple of days. Um, so you run it through this application and you get some output files. So this can either look like a set of other structures and you also can get scores. Um, and we'll, we'll look at a couple of these outputs as well in this talk. And then you run it through um, the appropriate analysis um, and 
this can feed into to understanding um, the scientific results of this run, um, which then you can go and test experimentally um, in the wet lab. <clears throat> How do I run a Rosetta command? So every command has the same basic layout. Um, you're going to point to Rosetta, which this is defined um, on your uh, local station, local workstation. Um, and then within Rosetta, you're going to go main, source, bin, and then the application name. Um, and then followed by this path, you're going to have different arguments. FYI, we also call these flags or options. Um, but general computer nomenclature, these are arguments. Um, and these arguments uh, can be multiple things. So this can be where you're telling Rosetta to look for an input file, whether that's an input structure file or a sequence. Um, you can also point to where you want to dump your output files um, and then other arguments that are protocol dependent. So your first Rosetta command. Um, if you want to do this on your own, um, which I highly encourage, um, this will be located within this Rosetta IO directory. Um, and what we're going to be doing is scoring this one QYS. Um, a little bit of background, uh, it comes from this paper um, at the bottom. Uh, this was one of the original um, kind of Rosetta proteins uh, from this top seven. Um, so what this is going to look like is we're just going to go in and score this. So using score JD2, um, if you can, uh, you want to type in that path. Um, and then we're going to give it a couple arguments. So um, we're going to do this dash in file S, which is saying um, that we're going to be putting in a PDB file, which we then see one QYS here. Um, so I had to previously download this one QYS.PDB file. This is straight from rcsb.org. Um, and then this argument here is dash out PDB saying I want an output PDB. Um, and then we have this caret to, um, to dump the terminal output into a log file, which I've named one QYS underscore score dot log. Um, so we're going to get three different outputs from this. Um, we're going to get our output PDB. Um, we're also going to get an output score file. Score.sc is the default name for this. And then we're also going to get this tracer output. Um, but I'm going to be going through each of these individually over the next couple slides. So reading structures into Rosetta, um, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, an intro to, to what types of um, files can be input. So PDB files, um, these are the most kind of universal um, type of structural file. Um, they can be read by any sort of visual program um, to look at structures, whether that's Pymol or whatever you, your preferred program is. Um, and these follow this general scheme of one line per atom. Um, it'll have the atom, its corresponding residue, um, the atom name, uh, 3D coordinates, XYZ coordinates, um, and potentially partial charge information as well. Um, or I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the, the formal charge. So this is useful for a small number of structures. So PDB files can only hold one structure um, in that file. Um, so this is where silent files come into hand because oftentimes when you're running Rosetta, you can get, um, you can run protocols that require thousands of outputs. Um, and so we don't want to just be dumping thousands of individual PDB files into a directory. Your computer is not going to like that very much. So we came up with this Rosetta specific file type, which is called a silent file. Um, it's more compact. Um, it's, it is, um, uh, instead of one atom per line, it's one residue per line. Um, this is really nice for archiving a lot of structures. Um, so you're only making one output file instead of one per structure. Um, you can also store these as binary files, which are just more compact. Um, they're not human readable, um, but um, you can easily um, extract structures out of this. Um, along those lines, it's really easy to convert back and forth between PDBs and silent files and Rosetta. Um, it's, it, it's very, um, uh, they make it very easy to do that. So some common command line arguments. Um, we have this dash in file S, which you've already seen. That's how you input a PDB, which I've named here example.pdb. 
Uh, you have parser protocol. You'll be using this a lot. This is for Rosetta Scripts XML files, so what I've named example.xml. Um, input sequence, uh, input that silent file that we just talked about on the last slide. And then your instructs, so telling Rosetta how many output files you want to produce. And I put 42 here, but you can obviously choose um, whatever number is suitable for what you're doing. And then a couple output files. Um, you can output things as silent files um, and also tell Rosetta which score, what the name of the score file is that you want. So I've named that output, example underscore out.sc. Okay, so let's actually, going back to that command that we ran a couple slides back, um, that it output is score.sc score file. Um, and so it looks like this. If you want to open up in your terminal um, your own score file, um, that would be great. Um, I have a little snippet of one here, just an example here. Um, so each row represents a different output pose. Um, so how many instructs you, you put in your command, um, that's how many are going to be in the output. So you can see that each of these is an individual structure. So each column here represents a different score term. And I'm not going to go too much into this because you have a whole lecture later on about this. Um, but you have um, in the first column, you have this total score metric, which is the score of the, the entire protein according to our score function. Um, this stands for full atom attractive. So this is a Leonard Jones van der Waals potential. Um, and also FA rep, those two go hand in hand. Um, so these are just examples of the first couple columns that you usually see. So we also output a PDB. Um, and the default nomenclature is um, the PDB named underscore 0001.pdb. So again, this is just like a normal PDB where you have one atom per line, you have the coordinates. Um, as you can see here, this is a little snippet from an output PDB um, which, with each atom on its, on it, its own line. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of the Rosetta output PDB, you also get some nice information um, about per residue energies. So again, this kind of looks like the output of that score file. You see this FAATR, that, um, that full atom attractive term that I just brought up. Um, and you get, for each residue, you get the individual scores. And this is really nice for trying to pinpoint where in a structure um, you might be seeing, um, um, you know, FA rep, if there's a large FA rep, um, where does that actually come from? This is really nice for that. So we also output the, uh, the terminal, what went through the terminal, um, into a log file. Um, and this is really nice for, for a number of reasons. Um, one of the first lines of a log file is, um, is the command line that you actually ran. Um, this is great for being able to, um, to know exactly what you ran in that particular command. <coughs> Um, it also gives you information about um, the, the databases being called, which, which protocols that you're using. It's also really nice potentially for debugging a run so you can get warning or error outputs. Um, and it makes, I think most importantly, it makes your protocol reproducible, right? You have your command line that's being put out, printed to the screen, um, and it makes it really nice for, for others to be able to reproduce. Um, reproduce your, your commands. So I have a little comic here about reproducibility. Um, so what does this look like? Um, this is just, a, again, a snippet, an example. Um, I would highly encourage you to look at, at your own tracer output. Um, but again, we can see the exact command line with the exact version of Rosetta that we ran. Um, and then we can get a couple of th you know, information about the, the protocols that were being run. Um, residue types that we're using, um, and the, the list kind of goes on and on. So um, FYI, these files can get very long, and you can use up a lot of, of data storage uh, with these log files. Um, even though they're incredibly useful, and I highly encourage you to make them, um, it might not be necessary to make them for every single one. Um, or if you want to, there are 
a lot of options to customize what gets printed out. Um, so you can mute certain things um, in order to just um, um, make this take up less space. So other file types that are more application specific, you're gonna be seeing these over the course of the next couple of days. Um, I just put a, a short list of different, um, different common ones. So um, for example, a span file is when you're working with membrane proteins, um, it lets Rosetta know which, which residues are spanning along the membrane. Um, params file, I'm a small molecule person, I do drug discovery, so I make a lot of params files. And these are files specifically so Rosetta knows how to read in small molecules that don't already exist in its database. Um, <clears throat> okay, protocols can get complicated. Um, this is one command line. It's a lot longer than the one that we, we just did when we were just simply scoring a structure. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, just want to let you know that these things can um, really get complicated um, quickly. The more that you get comfortable with what you're doing in Rosetta, the more that um, this will be more easily readable, um, I promise. Um, but it's still a lot. So you can also, instead of writing this as one long command line, um, there's also the option, very convenient option, and what I would highly recommend is putting these into an options text file, which you can call using this ampersand. So what does this look like? Let's convert this long uh, command line into a nice and organized options file. Um, you, can, you can organize it how you want, all the inputs in one place, um, some protocol specific options, and then your output, um, where you want to dump the, the output silent file containing all of your structures, um, and then how many structures that you wanna make. So this is now your command line. Um, just pointing to the Rosetta application like normal, and then just having this ampersand um, options file. So this makes it obviously much easier to read. It also is really nice so that you can just go back and and call um, this options file instead of remembering exactly what you had in a command line. So reproducibility purposes, it's really nice for this as well. So questions, please post in Discord. Um, I would normally be uh, wanting discussion here, but uh, this is virtual, so let's keep pushing on. Okay, so this next part is navigating Rosetta, and the reason that this is important is because Rosetta is huge. Um, and I often say with great power comes great responsibility um, when it comes to Rosetta. So it's an incredibly powerful program. It can do a lot of different and really cool things. Um, but you also need to know, um, be responsible with, with what you're doing. Um, so Rosetta resources, I've already pointed to this before. So this rosettacommons.org. I just want to let you guys know that um, there's documentation on, on different protocols. Um, user guides, um, which are great for kind of intro to Rosetta stuff. There's also a forum, and the person running this workshop, Rocco Moretti, um, he's one of the top people who answers that forum. So I would highly recommend um, using that resource as well. Um, it also has links to the software download, which you guys probably already know. Um, and then these tutorials are available um, on the Milo Lab website. So basic Rosetta structure, if you're gonna, um, if you wanna follow along with me, I would encourage that so you can get kind of acquainted with um, the command line, especially if you're not very familiar with, with, how, um, with working in a terminal. So we can CD into your base Rosetta directory. And if you do an LS command within Rosetta, you're gonna see four different things. You're gonna see main, you're gonna see tools, you're gonna see demos and documentation. Um, so let's dive into each of these individually, starting with main. And this is where most things live. Um, so this main source bin directory, we've already seen this a couple of times just in this short talk. Um, this is where your applications live. This is where your Scourge 82 lives. This is where your Rosetta scripts live. Um, and you're gonna be calling this a fair amount over the next couple of days. Um, this also in this Rosetta main source scons.py, this is how you compile. Um, so you guys have already run this command if you guys have downloaded the, uh, the source code and then you had to compile it um, in order to make these applications. So if you are familiar with, um, with computer code, specifically C++ is what Rosetta is written in primarily. Um, in this main source, SRC, 
main source source. Um, that's where all of the code lives. So if you're interested in a specific protocol and you are familiar with, um, with code, uh, I would encourage you to look in that. Um, it's kind of fun. So then you have um, main source scripts. So there's some useful things here. So again, uh, this params file, which I briefly mentioned uh, for small molecule stuff, this is where that lives, for example. So the database. Um, the database has everything, all the chemical information that Rosetta needs. Um, so if you want to CD into this directory and kind of browse through here, um, that would be um, uh, well worth your time, I would think. Um, so uh, you have different, um, we have different methods of scoring things. We have multiple score functions in Rosetta um, for different things. So you can look at, um, at the scoring directory. It has the weights in there. Um, you'll get into this uh, as we talk about the score function later on. Um, it also has Rotomer libraries that exist here. So um, basically the, the libraries which tell Rosetta which, um, which angles certain side chains can exist in. Um, and then we also have a chemical database. So all of this is about, um, has the, the amino acids and some basic information about them. Um, um, and also atom sets. So basically anything that Rosetta needs chemical information for, um, it's found within the, in the database directory. So main tests, um, this is primarily for developers who are developing um, uh, the code base. Um, and this is where they can go to, to test um, their new protocols. <coughs> okay. So back up again um, to the base directory Rosetta. We just went into main, so now we're going to go into the into tools. Um, so here are um, a couple tool directories that really are useful. Um, so protein tools um, contain uh, mostly Python scripts um, to do simple tasks. So um, clean PDB is something that we'll be using. Um, it's it's basically to, to um, clean a PDB file um, to make it Rosetta proof. Um, uh, you also have things like PDB renumber if you need things to be renumbered um, appropriately. Um, and then there's other things for, for potential analysis. So score, score versus RMSD plots, you'll be seeing, again, a number of these um, for analysis purposes. Um, and then the top N percent, let's take the top N percent uh, of output structures according to a particular score term. So these are a couple examples of things that are in there. These are primarily Python uh, scripts if you want to read through those. Um, if we go back here, um, just really quickly, um, Perl tools has things that are similar to protein tools. It's just written in uh, Perl language. Um, HTS tools, this stands for high throughput screen tools. Um, this is useful if you're doing high throughput screen um, drug discovery protocols. Um, feel free to look in there. And there's others, um, so feel free to browse around. Um, but tools is primarily for, for short analysis, um, uh, quick analysis of, um, of Rosetta outputs, for example. Okay, so in demos, um, so this is where these, um, the past tutorials live, um, the ones that you're going to be doing over the course of the next couple of days. Um, there's also some uh, protocol captures um, from the supplementary material of different papers that you may have read, um, and then just some other protocol examples located in public here. Um, some of this may be out of date. Um, we try our best to keep things up to date. Um, but just FYI, if you run into problems, please just uh, let us know. Um, I will say that when I was learning Rosetta, um, kind of on my own um, before graduate school, um, I lived in this directory. It was incredibly useful for me to figure out how protocols work. Um, this is an incredibly useful directory. Rosetta demos um, in understanding um, uh, how things in Rosetta are run. 
Okay, so backing up again to the base directory, we're gonna go into documentation now. Um, and there's a couple really useful directories in here um, with things more of general information about um, some of the Rosetta basics, so things that I've been talking about here, specifically input output options, um, and then application documentation, there's some nice stuff here. Um, again, I'm gonna point you to this rosettacommons.org. Um, it contains all of this information. Um, there's also a section for general structural biology questions, so how do I do X? Um, other common questions are how many outputs do I make? Um, and in uh, other things like this. How long does a run take, et cetera. Okay, so that's what I have for you all today um, in terms of this. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have questions, again, please let us know um, in, in Discord or, um, or just uh, message us um, uh, on the forum or, or wherever. So thank you guys so much. Um, hope you guys enjoy the workshop.